Assalamu alaikum viewers please like share and subscribe this channel links of pdf files used in this video are given in description so today is a part 6 of a lecture series about nanomaterials and in this particular lecture we have discussed physical vapor deposition which is bottom up approach for the synthesis of nanomaterials in the previous lecture we have discussed about chemical vapor deposition but in this lecture we will discuss about physical vapor deposition so physical vapor deposition is a technique by which a metal ceramic or a compound can be converted into a gaseous form and then is deposited on the surface of a substrate Uh, the basic difference between chemical vapor deposition and physical vapor deposition is that uh, in chemical vapor deposition the precursor molecules are actually first they chemically react with each other and then these products are deposited on the surface of a substrate whereas in case of physical vapor deposition method there is no such chemical reaction takes place and the things which are in their physical form Uh, they are first converted into vapors and then these vapors are directly deposited on the surface of a substrate so there is no before deposition any precursor chemical reaction in general pvd methods are subdivided into evaporation sputtering and pulsed laser deposition or laser ablation so first of all we will discuss here the evaporation method so this is the basic diagram of this method the source materials used in this process are generally refractory metals such as tungsten tantalum molybdenum etc so in this technique both substrate and source materials uh, are placed inside a vacuum chamber so this is actually a vacuum chamber and a vacuum of about 10 raised to power minus 6 to 10 to the power minus 7 uh, tor is generated the vacuum is required to allow the molecules to evaporate and to move freely into this chamber an electron gun is used to produce the electron beam of about 10 kilo electron volt this beam is directed at the source material Uh, in order to develop sufficient vapor so as to produce the deposits on a wafer or a substrate so what we are doing here that this is the material which has to be deposited and we are using the electron gun as to heat this substrate uh, this material and this is the substrate on surface of which this material has to be deposited so this is the vacuum chamber there is no resistance of any air molecules so the heated components just fly from here and they are deposited on the surface of this uh, component or material which has to be uh, changed its surface so in this way this evaporation method works uh so this is the first method of uh physical vapor deposition second pvt method is called as sputtering and uh, the diagram of this sputtering is shown in figure the source materials used in this product are generally an alloy ceramic or a compound so in this technique a high energy atom is ionized from usually argon Um, and it is used to hit the surface atoms of the target source material then the knocked out atoms in vapor form are deposited on the surface of the substrate to produce a uniform coating so what we are doing here that we are using this argon gas and uh, this argon gas is con is converted into a cationic form so this is the negative terminal or negative side of the chamber whereas this is the positive terminal or positive side of the chamber so these argon in cationic form it is attracted towards this negative plate and here it strikes with the surface of a target material which has to be deposited on the surface of a substrate so as the argon is collided then on the surface of this material the target atoms are sputtered and then these sputtered atoms are moving towards the substrate and then they form a thin film on the surface of the substrate so this is the second method of 
PVD which is called as sputtering third PVD method is known as pulsed laser deposition or PLD so in this a thin film is deposited on the material or substrate so the system consists of a target for example this is the target and it is made up of that material uh, uh, which has to be uh, uh, whose atoms are to be coated on the substrate so this is mounted in a vacuum chamber and a laser from an external source is then directed on the surface of this uh, target material and it is used to energize the surface of a target to produce a deposition plume so this is the deposition plume and it actually contains the atoms of this target material so the plume is typically directed towards the substrate and uh, in this way a very thin film is created or made on the surface of this substrate since each shot of a laser is directly related to the amount of material ablated the deposition rate can be calibrated and controlled very precisely so this is the basic diagram and we have mounted this target on some uh, motor so in order to get rotation of this target so that we can get a uniform plume formation and then this plume will contain then homogeneous quantity of atoms and these atoms will be then uh, converted or will be deposited on the surface of a substrate so this whole assembly again is uh, uh, carried out in a vacuum chamber in order to create the resistance from air or from uh, impurities so there are many advantages and disadvantages of this PVD method. Advantages include ultra pure films or particles then can be produced uh, because of all the methods are in practice in vacuum environment. PVD can also provide a good structural control by carefully monitoring the process. Material can be deposited with improved properties compared to the substrate material almost we can deposit any type of inorganic material uh, or some organic material the process is more environment friendly uh, uh, as compared to other processes however there are some disadvantages the disadvantage is that it increases the complexity of deposition and cost of production uh, it is actually a line of sight technique man meaning that it is extremely difficult to coat undercuts and similar surface features similarly uh, the per capita cost is high some processes operate at height vacuums and temperatures uh, so whenever we are working in high temperature and pressures that require extra skill processes require large amounts of heat and then followed by rapid uh, cooling systems and the rate of coating uh, deposition is usually low so these were the advantages and disadvantages of powder vapor deposition there are many applications of pvd methods the the pvd methods are usually a, is used for making uh, anti reflecting coatings for example uh, there will be no surface reflection and we can see uh, the light in a better way these are also used in making some electronic metal contacts so uh, the material that are used in metal contacts so their surface is coated with pvt similarly these are also used for hard coatings on tools uh, so uh, these coatings are usually used to improve hardness wear resistance and oxidation resistance uh, there are various applications of PVD methods in aerospace. Similarly, these are also used for coating of automotive materials. In future, in order to protect the surface, the automobiles will be uh, coated with PVD material. Similarly, uh, these techniques are also used for surgical tools and the medical prosthetics that are used uh, in the 
body structures uh, in order to uh, make their life long similarly these are also used for making dyes and molds for material processing and these are also used for coating of cutting tools in order to resist their wear and tear similarly some firearms are also coated with pvd in order to improve their uh, working and also to enhance their shelf uh, life so this was all about today's lecture so i hope you have well understood this lecture but still if you have question let me know in the comments i shall respond to those questions as soon as possible okay thank you allah hafiz